Hi, I'm Alexa, and today on the Vegas Dog Moms podcast, Jess and I return with a very special guest, Kayla, who taught us all about fostering dogs in Las Vegas. This episode is brought to you by Las Vegas Dog Yard, a private social club for responsible dog owners. They are a family-owned private facility located in the Southwest. The Las Vegas Dog Yard is the perfect destination for outdoor playtime, a certified sniff spot where all canines are welcomed with open paws. As a very important pet, you will gain access to seasonal features from a fire pit in the winter to a swimming pool in the summer, and there is plenty of lighting for evening play with your pup if you work during the day. They also offer boarding, training, and dog parties to celebrate birthdays and other special occasions. Visit the show notes at VegasDogMoms.com to download our exclusive coupon and tell Rachel that Vegas Dog Mom sent you. Now, let's get to the episode. You're listening to the Vegas Dog Moms podcast. I'm Alexa, the mindful dog mom. And I'm the dogtographer behind Pet Project by Jess. We are pet professionals obsessed with our dogs. Explore the life of a dog mom. Where all breeds are welcome. Every episode, we will teach you new tricks. And interview trustworthy experts who make pet lives better. We We are are the Vegas Vegas Dog Dog Moms. Moms. And welcome to the Vegas Dog Moms podcast, episode four. Four. Hello, hello. How are you? How was your week? Great. How was yours? It was It was actually kind of busy. My weekend, uh, I, I was at a baby shower for my hairstylist, and it was probably the fanciest baby shower I've ever been to. It was like top of the line decor, you know, the balloon arch and, you know, every single thing from the, on the table that you can think of and flowers everywhere and little um, succulents to bring home for all of the uh, favors. And they even had chefs that were there making all the food, all kinds of food. They had sandwiches and little like charcuterie in a box, like ready to go, which I think was actually a company. I like a separate company that does that, like it's a food truck here. I think it was that charcuterie box company. It was delicious. So I just kept eating food because I was like, I don't have anything else to <laughs> contribute to like the baby talk around here. So I'm just like stuffing my face, but it was amazing. They had a uh, Cineholic, um, the little, uh, I don't know if you've ever gotten the tiny, like they do like little like muffin versions, like <laughs> little mini versions with the, the icing on there. Oh, and nice. Gosh, they had, they had everything and it was amazing. And the best part was that I ran into an old coworker and um, I realized how much we need to catch up, but uh, she said she listened to our podcast and I was like, Aww. oh my gosh. <laughs> so yeah, her and her husband are fans. So yay, we have two listeners. <laughs> So that was really nice. And Sunday, I had a really special session with a friend that I made through the Animal Foundation. Last summer, I had just started my business. I was looking to get my foot in the door, make connections. And I started reaching out to all the shelters to ask if they needed photos done for of their dogs. And they either didn't get back to me or didn't have a space for me, really. So I kind of let it go after reaching out over like a month and the animal foundation reached out to me in July because they got a recommendation from fairy tale pet care. So thank you. And they saw my work. So they wanted me to come by and they had someone there have a list of dogs of all the longest stays and uh, seniors. And one of the first dogs we take out is this, adorable. It looks like a little bear. <laughs> he has, he's all black. He's got a little nub for a tail. Like it's there, but like something happened to it. <laughs> and he's a little wobbly because he's not only uh, blind, he's deaf. So, but he's got this like constant grin on his face the whole time. So he's this goofy dog with just his tongue hanging out. And his name is Chickpea. And the girl that was helping me is vegan and she thought oh my gosh like this dog is adorable i'm falling in love with him her dog had passed away six months earlier and she was not ready to adopt again but she loved this dog and it was like the first dog we took out and so i have all these great photos of him and she just kept talking about him the whole rest of the time and i said 
you're going to adopt this dog. And she's like, no. She's like, well, uh, how about I give it like two weeks if he's not adopted by the, by the time I see you again, maybe I'll, I'll take him home. And I come back and she adopted him. And the best part was that she obviously works there and she could bring her dog to work. So every time I go there, I see Chickpea and say hi. Aww. And he's super sweet. She has a wagon that she brings him in and he kind of hangs out in there when she's like doing other things. Otherwise, he just like hangs out right by her desk. He's adorable. And so over the past year now, um, he's had a couple health scares come up and just random issues with uh, vestibular disease. And he had to like, remove an eye from an infection that he had there, which was kind of a bummer. And then he had a heart murmur and then he had heartworm and there was just like more and more things piling on. And I just felt awful because she had just, you know, recently adopted him and he was a senior, but he was only 10 and it was just uh, sad to see him kind of decline, but he'd always bounce back the next time I would see him. And, uh, she reached out to me, um, not too long ago. Oh, Dixon. And she said, hey, I think it's time that we take some photos because I got some bad news about his health. And so that, I wasn't like thrilled to take photos, but I was just like honored that she asked me to do it. So we met and it's like, talk about a challenge, uh, a deaf blind dog missing one eye too on top of it. So like my camera's like, where am I focusing? <laughs> and he can't hear. He does this like, kind of Stevie Wonder wave <laughs> of like constantly moving his head around. So <laughs> um, stinky treats uh, helps. That was, that was first and foremost and they were disgusting, but they were perfect. And um, <laughs> I just had a lot of interactive shots of her with him and they, they, they came out really, really sweet and I'm excited to share them with her. But but yeah, it was a lot. It was like a heavy, a heavy session. We kept it light during mm -hmm. the session, but afterwards, um, that was, uh, it was uh, kind of all came out. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I'm glad that we got the photos. He is still doing okay as of right now, but he has like 10% liver function. So it could be like days or weeks. So we didn't want to, we didn't want to wait too long on that. And I also found out another client's dog passed away. So it's been a, mm -hmm. it's been a little rough of a week, but, um, but yeah, hanging in there and just, uh, you know, staying positive. I, I have another shoot coming up with two, two little Frenchies and I'm excited about that. One's a puppy and one's yeah. like three years old. So I'm looking forward to that kind of helps balance things out with my, my world. So yeah, that's that's kind of what I did. You do anything fun or just uh, same old, same old? Any work stuff going on? You haven't met Sebastian <laughs> well, Bach yet? No. <laughs> well, that's why I said my week was great because it was crazy busy. Oh my gosh, Memorial Day weekend. Every year we ho at my venue, we host punk rock bowling's club shows. So we do five, well, more so 10 sold out shows because it's two shows each night but five days worth of, of events and very long days. And it was crazy busy, but it it's, that's the favorite part. My favorite part of Memorial day is just getting to see all the punk rockers get in town and be in their own little Disneyland, watching their bands, getting drunk and just having a good old time. <laughs> Got some great people watching. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then unfortunately after that, the weekend after that, Dixon decided to play sick and we had to rush him to, well, for, first we went to the chiropractor because luckily, thank you, Dr. Bradshaw, for squeezing us in early because I was like, oh, I think you injured your back. Like, it, you, it looks like you just hurt yourself. And then she's like, yeah, no, I don't think this is a back injury because most back injury dogs don't come to my office and start vomiting everywhere. <laughs> so due to the vomiting, we took him to the nearest vet that was available to see him. And she did x-rays and blood work. And she's like, yeah, he injured his back. He's just probably vomiting due to stress. And I'm like, oh, okay, great. So there's there's a nice little pill <laughs> all to tell me that you injured your back. So, But he's doing great now. And oh, the life of a dog just mom. Just keeping you, <laughs> keeping you on your toes, making sure yeah. you're paying attention. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And even, uh, even right now, he decided so to start reverse sneezing. So I'm like, great, big stretch. Oh. And then you start reverse sneezing. <laughs> 
So aside from that, he's okay though. It's just yeah. a, a back injury. Okay. Yeah, and well, that's one good thing to hear. <laughs> one one special thing that I have done and seen seen an improvement in is before his back injury, he was using a ramp to get up onto my bed because I don't believe in stairs. I like using ramps, and I'm pretty sure he just tried to cheat on it and like that's where he injured himself. So I took away the ramp. So now he has to sleep on the floor and he hasn't had any issues. So I'm hoping that helps keeping him off my bed. Okay. Can I ask what the difference is between ramps and stairs? Like the little ones for dogs, right? (laughs) Yeah. So the difference between using a ramp and a stairs is basically the same thing for us when we're disabled. It's just the way you're moving the, the ligaments and the joints. So when you're using stairs, it's just more like stressful. That would that would be a really good topic to interview like Dr. Bradshaw on. Um, yeah. Add yeah. it to the and list. <laughs> and Alpha Paw, they actually have a really great ramp um, for dachshunds and other dogs that are prone to IVDD like Dixon. Luckily, he wasn't diagnosed with IVDD, but he was getting close there with his back injury. So. The more you know. Well, I'm glad that he's feeling better. (laughs) Speaking of Memorial Day weekend, right before that, we had our little Vegas Dog Moms meetup at Horse Trailer Hideout. Yay! So thank you to everyone who showed up. I met a lot of really cute dogs uh, from all kinds of breeds and <laughs> mixes. One was like a, a Russian toy. One was a hairless chihuahua. <laughs> it's a really funny look. <laughs> it's adorable. <laughs> They're really goofy. Um, there were some pugs there. It was a baby pug. There was a pug. It was oh this big. It was a teeny gosh. tiny pug. Um, there was about eight people there, which I thought was there probably more, but I've only been there once a long time ago, like right after it opened. And it was like late at night on like a beer hopping tour. We ended up on the patio for a little bit and we moved on to Silver Stamp, also a great place. But I never brought my dog there. I haven't been back since. And I knew that it was dog friendly, but not like that dog friendly. So I walk in there, there's a front patio that's also like caged in. So like a few dogs there, like they can't like run away. Uh, there's couches right on the inside and they have like the, you know, the a rolling door that's up. So you, if you're sitting right there, you get like the, the breeze, but you have the AC and then the bar is right there. And the staff is super cool. And they're always checking in on you. There's water bowls all over the floor. Then there's a whole back patio area and they have tables and I believe they have games and other things like that. It was just like super hot. So I didn't want to go out there, but they also have free popcorn and it's like, you can't really beat that. And, um, I had a whole lot of fun there and yeah, I met a few new people who are now following our page, and I I think, uh, yeah, we'll make a habit of that place for sure. So, yeah, thank you for having us, Horse Trailer Hideout. We had a, a good time, and I will take note for the suggestion that we need a sign so you know who we are because not everyone knows the space. So, yeah, we'll, we'll get right on top of that, Rose. So, yeah, I, that was a, a fun time. So what are we talking about this week? So today we got to interview Kayla Rogers, and she is a foster mom. She's been doing it for years, and she talks to us all about the myths of fostering, the pros, the cons, everything that you need to know if you want to start fostering right now. She gives you all the advice you need to do it. Awesome. Let's get into it. All right. Hi, Kayla. Thank you so much for joining us. You're here to tell us about fostering and volunteering for a few of our local rescues, Mm -hmm. which we think is really wonderful, and to answer some questions and dispel some misconceptions that people might have about uh, doing fostering and before making that next step, which we think is really cool that you offered to do this. And we know that uh, all of our shelters and rescues could use more people like you. So I guess with that, tell me, uh, how long have you been a foster mom? Well, first of all, thank you for having me because um, our community needs fostering and help in shelters more than you can even imagine. Um, so I think it's really great that we're coming together and get, getting this word out. Um, I And I have been fostering for two years. And what inspired you to become a foster mom? So my boy came from the Nevada SPCA. Um, he was a transplant from Arizona. 
And uh, so I don't know if you guys remember, but I adopted him in 2019 and it was at the end of 2019 in December, and just prior to that, the Nevada SPCA was actually on, like, national news for having no dogs left in the shelter. The entire shelter was empty. Um, but the only two dogs that were left were my boy and an, I can't remember the other dog, but only two dogs left. So I went down to the shelter. I saw – well, first of all, I saw him on Facebook – uh, as a post and I was like I looked at him was like oh my god that's my dog so when I went there shelter was completely empty um and I was like oh my god he's mine so uh I've had him since 2019 and I just saw the way that he completely changed my life for a few years I was like battling some mental health issues and literally this dog like got me out of bed to help me live my life get me outside get me walking just in the fresh air and I was like Oh my God, he's changed my whole life. I want, I want other people to experience this too. Um, and I just felt like I could have been doing more for our community. So the, that was the way I kind of like, okay, let me like deep dive into these socials and find out what shelters I can really help out. Um, and I just got in contact with one and that's how I started. And that's what inspired me was my, my precious baby. <laughs> Awesome. So he really started this whole thing off is, is finding him and he, uh, he inspired you to, to just get into fostering. <laughs> yeah. He inspired me to, cause I was just like, you know what, if, if I can like be the, the passageway for someone to find their best friend, I want to help like make that connection. My next question is going to be, have you ever had a foster failure or like what I like to call success uh, since you started fostering? So funny story. Um, my last foster, what my second to last foster, she was this tiny little pocket bully. And she, um, I, li I had her for literally 24 hours because she was so adorable. I had all these inquiries for her to, co to come adopt her. So we went to the adoption event that the rescue was putting on and I brought her. She was adopted probably within an hour or two. But while I was there, my husband was with me. And he found this little lab mix and he just, he's the one falling in love with her. And he's the one like, well, oh, honey, can we take her for foster? And I'm like, mm -hmm, okay. So we brought her home and I mean, he just fell in love. And then after a while, I'm like, and she's already, she's a puppy. She's not even a year old and puppies are a lot of work, um, at least for me. So I was, I was a little apprehensive but um, we spent a few weeks with her and we were just like, oh my gosh, she fits right in. So she was our foster fail and her name is Chelsea. <laughs> she's like, I think they said she's lab in Chesapeake Bay mix. So. Oh, that's a fun one. <laughs> she's sweet. She's cute. A lot of attitude. Does she have her own Instagram? No, she does not. None of my, none of my pups have their own Instagram. Okay. But my TikTok, um, I do post a uh, little video snippets of like promoting my fosters my instagram is constantly promoting my fosters so and it, they're all at kpop23 now what rescues and shelters do you work with the last two years uh primarily i've been working with vegas roots rescue uh i believe they're a 501c nonprofit, and um i mean they are always begging for fosters if anybody's uh, interested literally all i did was i got on instagram i found them i dm'd them i said hey or no I went, I found them on Instagram. I clicked on their link in bio, went to their website and signed up on their website. And like, I think a day or two later, they're texting me and asking me how I can help. And that's the rest is history. Well, that's pretty awesome how like quickly they responded. So since you have your own pets at home, what has that experience been like fostering? Like, do they have to do like a match? Like, is it hard to find a dog that's right for you? Uh, for people that are out there, they're like, I would love to foster, but I have a dog at home and I don't want them to get in a fight. I don't want this new dog to eat my couch. Like, how does that process work um, with them kind of placing the right dog for each person? Yeah, I totally get that. Um, I was really apprehensive about that in the beginning as well. Um, I would say the best advice is take a, a really good reflective look at your uh, resident dogs or your resident animals and see what kind of personalities they've got going on. Um, my boy at home is very mellow, very quiet. Obviously, you haven't heard him peep at all. <laughs> um, very low key. So I would specifically ask the rescue like, hey, I'm, I'm not really one for fostering puppies. Um, it's not really a good match with my dog. He At the time, he was five years old. Now he's seven. 
So I was like, my dog's a little bit older. So if you want to match me with older dogs, um, even special needs dogs I've taken in, um, cause they're just a little bit more mellow. They usually, uh, pick up on the potty, um, like potty training a little bit faster. Um, so I would say, I mean, any rescue is going to be willing to work with what you want because they need the help. Okay. So you could reach out and say, Hey, I'm looking for this type of dog specifically, and they'll place the right type of dog for you. Say I would, I, they should at least try to work with you to get the right dog fostering, you know, okay. connection. And speaking of having pets at home, do you take more than one dog in at a time? As a rule of thumb, no. Um, For me, it was, um, I was working a different type of full-time. Right now I work full-time at home, but prior I was working very long hours. So it just didn't make sense for me to take on more than one at a time. But some people do. I um, have uh, connections in the fostering community. Like they'll take moms with their, like pregnant moms about to have the babies. They're taking, they're bottle feeding these babies. I mean, they're my heroes because that's a lot of work. Um, They're taking litters of puppies. I mean, some people it works for them. Um, Me, not so much. (laughs) (laughs) Let's say that that they can be flexible. So I know that one of the dogs I got in the past from Foopy, Uh uh, the foreclosed upon pets, um, he came from a home of, I believe they had five or six other fosters at the time. So uh, yeah, I, I, I know that some people take on a whole bunch, <laughs> yeah. Um, but even just taking one is uh, appreciated. So, since you started fostering two years ago, yeah, what has been your most challenging experience in general dealing with that? Well, I'm glad you asked because I actually have um, my favorite story. I love to tell everybody. Um, I have pictures of her, and she's my sweet girl, and I love her so much. If you send those to us, we have videos, yeah. so I will post those <laughs> on our video while you're talking about her. Well, the reason I have hard copy photos is because I made a scrapbook of all of my fosters. Aww. This is my foster photo album. Oh my goodness. But she hasn't, I haven't made her own page yet, but this is, this is Sniffy Snail. Oh my goodness. So she's wearing a little outfit. <laughs> so, okay. So what you're seeing that she's wearing is actually called a drag bag. Because what is that? So she was a Frenchie that the family couldn't take care of her anymore because she developed IVDD, which is very um, typical for Frenchies. Uh, it's, it's I believe it stands for intervertebral disc Shit. disorder. Yep. So, so like their back legs give out. From yeah. Like a, a back. Um, yeah. Issue. That's I did not know that. So she ended up being paralyzed from the waist mm-hmm. down. Um, she was my biggest challenge because uh, in certain ways it was like taking care of an infant. Um, so the drag bag helped, it's like a sack that you put their lower body in and then you clip it over them in the front and they can just walk with their front paws and it makes it so much easier to drag their lower body. Um, and it worked out really well because my whole house is tile. Um, but she- Would that be like in place of like a, a wheelchair? Would that she be like had, another option? She had a wheelchair too, but oh. she actually preferred the drag bag. The For her, um, it seemed like the wheelchair was a lot of work. Um, a lot of, um, a lot of like just physical effort for her yeah. and she zipped around in that bag so well. So it, for her, it worked. Um, she, obviously she was challenging to get adopted out because people would see the type, the level of work she would be and they would get scared, which is totally understandable. Um, anytime I had meet and greets with people, I would let them know this is her care routine. This is how we do it. And some people were amenable to it and some were like, oh boy. Um, but eventually we found her a home. Uh, she was, I think the rescue's own, one of the only out of state adoptions they've ever done. we found her a home in Arkansas and I found her at, in a Frenchies Facebook group, like people, just fans of Frenchies. And so I was posting her, this lady from Arkansas reached out to me. She's like, Oh my God, I love her. She was the perfect match because, uh, this woman had, um, like vet tech experience working for a neurology clinic. So she knew all about her condition, all about her disease. Um, so she, in July of last year, she went home, she got on a plane and went home to Arkansas with her new family. And oh, I think about her all the time. And sometimes the mom will send me picture updates and I love her. Um, she was my favorite, even though she was the most challenging. <laughs> That's great that you get updates though. So yeah, you can see that your work was <laughs> put to good use. Yeah. 
So what do you think prevents people from becoming a foster? I would think the, because the, the question I get the most is, well, how long am I going to have them? Like, how long until they get adopted? Or I think that people are really concerned about time commitments. And I think that's a really dependent question. Um, it's dependent on, you know, when I get a foster, I'm promoting their I'm promoting them on social media, like from, I hit the ground running. I get them in my home, they've got their pictures on social media, videos, information. Um, so my turnover can be pretty quick. Um, I I think the, the shortest I've had a dog was 24 to 48 hours. And the longest was the situation I just explained to you. And she, I think I had her for four months. But, um, but average, I would say three, three to four weeks three weeks. Okay. Is that pretty typical that it's kind of like once you take on a foster that it's your job to photograph and video as often as possible, promote them and kind of like be their little cheerleader the whole time? Or do people typically send that stuff to the rescue and they handle it? So I think it depends on who you work with. I just like to take a more proactive role um, in getting them promoted out there. And luckily I have really supportive friends who if they see my stuff on socials, they'll share it tell their friends about it. Um, but I mean, like I said, I've got friends in the foster field that are like less um, hands on with the promotion of them. But normally what my rescue will ask for is like, can you just send us um, still shots, just photos of them, like outside where the lighting is really good, um, pictures of, the, of them being silly or whatever, and then they will promote them on their socials. Once once a foster finds a home, mm -hmm. how soon before you get another dog? Is that instant? Do you say, hey, I need a break for like a month because I'm going out of town and I can only take my own dogs with me or something like that? Mm -hmm. Is it kind of just like your schedule? Like you run that or are they like, can you take this dog like right away? So um, honestly, it's depending on how I feel. If I get adopt a dog adopted um, and I feel like I'm ready to just take another one, all I literally have to do is text my rescue and they'd be like, okay, what do you think about this one? And if I agree, I can go pick them up that day if I wanted. Um, but if I told them, hey, I need a break, they're like, okay, cool, let us know, you know. Awesome, all right. So in your opinion, uh, what are the positives of fostering for you personally and just in general? The positives are, I truly believe um, anybody that fosters or works in animal welfare is making a huge impact in their community. Um, you're connecting people with their best friends. I mean, what, what kind of better positive can you get? You're changing people's lives for the better, I think. You know, you're giving them a best friend. So I think that's the biggest positive. So for me personally, I think it has taught me a lot of patience, um, which I, um, it's helped me grow in that aspect. Um, when you get, especially I would take in dogs that are, my rescue likes to think I am really great at <laughs> rehabbing like really sick and really scared dogs. <laughs> so it's it's taught me like a lot of patience and compassion. Um, a lot of times I'll get these dogs and they're just like skin and bones and they're afraid of the world. And I've kind of like made it my mission to like get them out of their kennels, get them out of their little hiding spot and just come hang out with me and here's some treats and let me love on you. And eventually like they just, their personalities start popping out and you're like, Oh my God, this feels so good. Like you're, you're blossoming. I love this. And um, so for me personally, that's the biggest reward that I get is just watching them transition and seeing that the world is nice. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's gotta be a great feeling to see it's like watching that change happen. Like, and that you did that. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> yeah. And I think we did talk about it in the beginning, but can you go a little bit more in depth about how people can start fostering? Sure. I would say um, if you're unsure of where to start, uh, maybe just get on Google or Instagram and just rescues, dog rescue um, in your area. Um, where, and literally just get on their website. And most of the time, most of the time they're going to say, want to foster, apply here and go through the process. And I can probably almost guarantee you they will contact you back. Is there like something specific that you would recommend to them when it comes to presenting the application or? Um, gosh, I applied so long ago. Um, I would just, I mean, if they're asking you something special, like why do you want to foster? Why would you be a good fit? I would talk about just maybe putting emphasis on wanting to help your community, 
you have the extra time and the love to give. And anything special to do at home? I would say um, when you're when you're first bringing in a foster, if you have your own dogs at home, uh, I, I, I like to have them meet in a mutual spot or in a neutral spot. So a lot of times I'll bring in the fosters into my backyard to meet them with my dog in the backyard. So I'm not bringing this brand new weird dog directly inside the home where it's your resident dog's safe space, you know. Um, so they'll meet their, they'll meet each other in the backyard, sniff each other out. Uh, sometimes they'll play a little bit. And like once they get comfortable with each other and I can see there's no aggression going on, then I'll bring the foster dog into the home. Have you ever had an issue in the past where like a dog just did not work out and just weren't able to foster them at home at your home? I, you know, I had, I only had that happen one time in probably the 15 dogs that I fostered. Um, so we had, we had just adopted Chelsea. And like I said, she's not even a year old. And they had asked, my rescue had asked me to foster a dog that was just about her age. And they were just non stop running, jumping, playing. And I was, and my house was a little chaotic and I did it for as long as I possibly could, but I had to let them know like, guys, I, my house is going to be destroyed. <laughs> like I, I, I can't do two puppies under one in the same house. So fair. <laughs> yeah. When I was going to say, is there anything specific? Like when, when you apply to be a foster, and then the rescue come, like, does, did the rescue do a home check on you? Like, is there anything you, you prepared for the rescue when they came to your home? Or is it just the apply, they contact you, they have the dog? Okay, good question. So when I um, initially applied to be a foster, we were still kind of under like a lockdown of, you know, not a lot, of, like just social distancing in general. So they would just ask me for pictures of my home, like making sure that the backyard was secure, um, uh, just making sure there's enough space for the dog. Um, in fact, when I do do adoptions, they will ask the potential adopter, send us photos of your home. So just to make sure the place is safe. Um, I have never personally heard of any rescue walking into a potential foster's home and doing like a home check. I've never heard of that. So, But that was my experience. Yeah, I think I think it is more up for the one adopting the dog. I was just curious how Vegas Roots Rescue, for example, handles their fosters. Yeah, that's how that's been my experience. That was great. Um, was there anything that you wanted to add that you just wanted to to get some information out there for anyone else listening that maybe we didn't cover? Mm -hmm. I guess I would just add like if you are on the fence and you you're just you're not sure i mean but you really want to help just try one time and if it's really not working out the rescue is always going to take your dog back and they're always going to have them in a safe place even if it's not your home um i mean also if people want to dm me and ask me questions i can answer questions that's totally fine too um and just go into it with an like an open heart an open mind and just realize that you're making, you're changing that dog's life and their adopter's life. And you can really make a big impact, a really positive impact. That's a great way to put it. I know that you said for your, your Frenchie, they send you updates. Do any of your other um, adopted dogs' parents send you updates? Um, here and there, uh, I would say initially when they get adopted, like the first week or two, I'll get updates like, oh, look at all these toys I bought them. They're doing so great. They're having so much fun. And I'm like, yay. You know? um, but after a while, you know, they, they go on and they live their happy ever after. And that's the whole point. So, yeah. If, if the families want to send me updates, I'm thrilled to get them. But if not, I totally get it. And you got 15 dogs so far and counting that you've it, uh, helped? Ish. Somewhere around there, yeah. Nice. It's very impressive. So thank you for all that you're doing. <laughs> so are there any questions that you get regularly from people who are interested in fostering? So I've had people come to me with concerns like, what if there's adopters that I don't want the dog to go to or that I'm, I'm not comfortable with them being adopted into? And I think that's a totally fair concern because you're going to put a lot of time, effort, and love into this animal. 
So um, luckily I work with a rescue where if um, I'm meeting a potential adopter at a meet and greet and I don't feel comfortable, then that dog is not going to that home. Um, they have pretty much given me full discretion as to what homes these dogs are placed into. And, and they know that I would never, ever, ever put them in a dangerous situation because I love them so much. So if you're concerned about that, um, I would say see, make sure your rescue is going to work on you with placing the dog in the right home. I think really how you explain just like trying it once and just giving it a try in general and just going from there and that the foster will help you and kind of have you have their support the whole way through yep. is is good to know. So yeah, thank so, you yeah. so much for giving me this space because it's a huge need. And I'm telling you, if you open your heart, you're going to get a lot of love back, a ton of love back. So yeah, when it comes to fostering, what kind of supplies do the, does the rescue offer to you? Is there anything that you donate yourself to the dog? Okay. Uh, Whether it's food, toys. Super great question um, that I overlook. I totally forget about. But um, any any type of rescue that you're working with, they should be providing all of the medical care. Um, and My rescue does provide the food, um, kennels if you need it. I mean, I enjoy going out and spending my hard-earned money on dog toys, so I don't ask them to <laughs> donate toys. Um, but the basics, the food, the shelter, the medical care, the, the that should be provided by the rescue. Great. Oh, I did not know that that was a thing. It's kind of like dog sitting for your friend. They give you all their stuff, and it's like, great, I just get you know to what? do the fun part, and I'm yeah. delighted with everything. <laughs> that is a really great way of looking at it because – Essentially what's happening is the rescues will be pulling these dogs from high, high kill shelters and they just need a space for them to live long enough to find their forever home. Yeah. And we all know dogs need a lot of time to decompress and get used to your routine, a new place. So yeah, that fostering in between. I saw it firsthand with a dog. I volunteer at the Animal Foundation Take Photos uh -huh. and there was a dog I saw two months ago who was too afraid to even stick his head out of the little like dog flap for the door in the back. And he would just stick his head out and see me trying to take him out of the cage and he'd just pop it back out. And I was like, I'm not going to force this dog to take you know, photos. And they were just trying desperately to get a good one of him. And he was just terrified of being in there because he came from living in a home mm -hmm. and now it's loud and chaotic and he doesn't know what's going on. And I was there last week and I saw him there again when, when they bring out the list of like, here's the dogs we're going to photograph. And I go, why are they still here? And yeah. we went to go take him out completely different dog. Yep. They said, they're like, he's been in foster for the last month and a half. And now he's back at the shelter because we want some new photos of him. We want him to be in play group. Super great personality, super lovable. He's goofy. He's gentle. I was like, this is not the same. Yeah. Dog. So I've seen like the effects of like what fostering can do just by getting them out of that space and just into a home and just being around people like dogs crave that. So I, it really does make a difference. That's yes, you're totally right. That's a really good point that I didn't really I forgot about was I mean, the rescue will come to me and be like, This dog is just not doing well in the shelter environment. And you're right, they do completely flip when they're in a quiet, calm, loving home. And you can be the one to provide that. Yeah. I think that also goes to say, you know, people who think, oh, my dog is really happy and has a great personality. I can no longer take care of him, so I'm going to drop him off at a shelter. They'll do fine. They'll get adopted immediately. Your dog's mm -hmm. going to shut down and be a completely yeah. different dog, and it's not what you think. Like, just – that's why we have fosters. So that's just the reality. So we – that's why we appreciate what you're doing. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, so where can people follow Vegas Roots Rescue, follow you, any of the rescues that you work with? So, uh, like I said, I adopted my best friend at the Nevada SPCA, and on Instagram, it literally is Nevada SPCA. Uh, Vegas Roots Rescue is that on Instagram, just Vegas Roots Rescue. And if you want to follow me and my foster journeys, it's K A Y P O P 2 3 on all the socials. Perfect. Instagram and TikTok you mentioned earlier. Instagram, TikTok. I think I'm even on Twitch. <laughs> oh, wow. <So. laughs> All over the place. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, we really appreciate you joining us today and just like reaching out in the first place because we were trying to get more, you know, local people to talk about, you know, the ways that they're helping animals here. So when we saw your name pop up and what you do, we're like, yes, she has to come on the show. So. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. 
Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. And we're back. I thought that was a really great interview. I hope we asked and answered all the questions you might have had about fostering because now is a great time to foster a dog if you've been thinking about it because our shelters are all very full. And right now, what I wanted to mention, the Henderson Animal Shelter is in desperate, dire need of dog leads. Please donate as many as you can for all the dogs that are coming into the shelter. That is a great tip. I hope everyone uh, shares that message and uh, stops by there because they're a great organization over there and they're they're smaller and they get full very fast. And I still can't believe that, that it fills up as quickly as it does once they get dogs adopted out of there. So yeah, <laughs> I think it might be time to open up our treat bag. What do we have in there? <laughs> I'm sorry. I like that you're just like commentating like what should be on there. I'm leaving that in. <laughs> so today's treat bag comes from Sandy. Sandy wants to know because she is fostering a dog right now and she needs to place that dog into boarding and training while she helps her mom with chemo treatments. Do we know of any places that we trust that we can refer her to? Well, Sandy, you are absolutely in luck because we have the dog lovers directory at mindfuldogmom.vegas. And there you can search by suburb. You can say, hey, I live in Centennial Hills. I live in downtown Las Vegas. Select your, your suburb. And then you can say, I need a dog trainer. And if you want to go even deeper, you can say, I need boarding and training. And that's going to populate with all of the dog trainers like Vegas Valley Canine, Lucky Pup, Barks Parks, all the trainers that offer those programs for you. Cool. Is there a specific uh, business that you recommend or that you've used in the past? Um, I... I have senior dogs, so I don't really need to train them in in a boarding aspect, especially since I not, don't really travel that often. But I absolutely love, if you're looking for a private facility, I definitely would go with Lucky Pup. Jamie is amazing, and she accepts all breeds and sizes, or Kyle of Va Vegas Valley Canine. Um, but if you do want a public facility, then definitely Barks Parks. Cool. I think... We also have to, to, to get that poop bag out, Alexa. Yep. <laughs> All right, Alexa, so, what's, what's in there? So on today's poop bag, my goodness, I apologize to all of our listeners that actually attended the horse trailer hideout meet, meetup that we were talking about earlier this episode. I had a work emergency, as I was talking about earlier, I help manage punk rock bowling music festival every year, and then we had a lot going on. So I unfortunately got stuck at work, and I was not able to make it and chit chat about all things holistic. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so first of all, unacceptable. And two, <laughs> why did I say first of all and then two? And second of all, <laughs> second of all, we had. One of our Vegas dog moms show up, Evelyn, I believe is her name, and she had tons of cute dogs, and she had tons of knowledge and questions about all these things that I know nothing about because it's just me, and I'm just like, I wish Alexa could be here. And yeah, she brought up um, certain I, – I didn't even know you could, you could do this. She said that she got her dogs um, spayed and neutered, but – by keeping their hormones so it didn't change mm -hmm. anything and there was there's a whole science behind that with like you know avoiding some cancers <laughs> and 
I don't know. You know more than I do about it, but yeah, yeah. she she had all this information. She also said that you should be putting uh, your dog's water in a glass Pyrex dish and not the yeah. stainless steel because a lot of the stainless steels ones you get from the store are not real stainless steel, and just the other ones are just like breeding grounds for bacteria. But she had all this information and all these like cool facts, and like, I I learned a whole lot from you, Evelyn. So thank you for showing up and <laughs> talking to me. Sorry that you just got me at that event who's just there to pet the dogs but um we will we're gonna make up for that aren't we alexa yes yes <laughs> okay. we are i'm definitely excited to announce that we will be partnering with horse trailer hideout this summer stay tuned for all the details to come save the date for june 30th and details will follow cool we'll see you <laughs> there if you guys have any questions about fostering, definitely reach out to Kayla or let us know and we'll feature it on the next treat bag. You can find everything that we discussed today in our show notes and at VegasDogMoms.com. And hey, Jess, don't forget. Tell, tell your, your dog, dog we, we said, said hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Vegas Dog Moms podcast. If you liked the episode, please leave us a review and be sure to tell all of your pet parent friends about us. This is a Mindful Dog Mom production produced with Pet Projects by Jess. The content of the show is for educational purposes only. It is not a substitute for professional medical care and advice. Please consult with your veterinarian before making any changes to your pet's health based on the topics we discussed today. Did you know? You can leave us a voice message with questions and support us on Spotify. If you want to inquire about being a guest or ask a question, please email hello at vegasdogmoms.com. Follow our adventures on Instagram and TikTok by using at Vegas Dog Moms plus at Pet Project by Jess. And you can always visit our website for more details about our show. You can find us on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts.